Hello, Jamie here from Inky and Scrappy, sharing with you today how to create a light up card from scratch. So making your own circuit. This one is, I'm just showing you a few that I've done in the past. This one was a confirmation card. And my very first one, I know I haven't given it away yet. An ice cream truck. And this one, the light bulb in the lamp lights up. It was really bright when I filmed this, so you couldn't see it very good. There you go. So to do your own circuit building, you need a few simple supplies. You're going to need batteries. I use really, I buy the 100 pack from Amazon, super cheap. They're like 9 to 11 cents a piece. Um, copper tape and LED an LED battery of, or an LED light of some sort. So this style is a button style light. Um, those tend to be really flat. They work well. They come in multiple colors. I have multiples of those. The other ones are the wire lead LEDs. So these ones I like because they tend to be a no fail. Um, the wire on them connects really well to the copper wire and I don't usually have trouble with those at all. And this is a new style that I found that I have yet to use. They're made for textiles or for clothing. And so I just got the wire thread to go through those and I'm excited to try those to see how those work compared to the other because they look like they'll be very thin and hopefully reliable. The other ones that I just got are a battery pack style. So you just flip the switch and it's on and off and those connect to a lead wire LED. These ones I would say probably look like the Pear Blossom Press ones the most but I think Pear Blossom Press is a, a, like a, a push button on off like it's just push. This one is an actual flip the switch style one. Um, I screwed the wires up so I ended up putting my batteries in my battery pack backwards because the gold or the copper wire is actually supposed to go to the red one and the black is supposed to go to the silver wire but it works and you should be able to do these in sequence I haven't tried it yet so once I do I will maybe link a video or share a card and we'll see how it goes so to start you're going to need a base where you're going to build your circuit on and then you're going to have your top piece or where your your card front is going to go so the card front just kind of I need to know on there where I want my lights so I kind of have an idea I'm you know going on the fly on this one for the most part but that image is going to be probably in the middle so that's kind of where I figured out where I needed it to be cut my circle with a circle die I didn't have the coordinating die so I found one that was in size or similar in size cut it on my main panel traced the outline on my bottom one stamped the image so I kind of knew where I was going to place that image and where I needed my light to shine through we're going to start with a small piece of paper and it's going to be made into my switch. So this one was cut at one inch by two and an eighth inch. If I would do it again, I would do two and a quarter inch by one inch, scoring that at one inch and then one and a quarter. The one and the eighth just didn't, that eighth inch didn't seem to be tall enough for my battery to sit and for my switch mechanism to work as well as I would have liked it to. So I will try to link that in the description box below the size that I would prefer to use. Now to put your circuit on there or your switch on there, you know, you kind of need to know where your placement of your card front is going to be. And sometimes I do my card front totally before I even start my my circuit. And that's not a bad way to go. And that way you can figure out where you want your your switch to be better. This one I was just kind of going on the fly. And I tend to like to put it in that lower right hand corner. It seems to just be an easier, you know, you don't have to have the card laying down to press the switch. You can do your finger behind. I don't know. It just seems to be easier to me. But it really depends on your card layout and what you're going for. 
So I have the switch mechanism or the switch paper in, in the spot that I need it to be. And now I'm going to figure out where I'm going to draw. And I put a piece of foam adhesive there to kind of keep my battery in place, but I really wouldn't have needed to. And so I'm going to draw out where my circuit is going to run, or my copper tape in this instant. So the copper tape is super cheap. I think I bought it in a six roll pack. I wouldn't have had to go that big because I'm still on my first roll and I have done many, many light up cards. So here I put positive and negative. This was what my thought was. And really don't need to worry about positive and negative if you're only running one light. Um, if you're running multiple lights, then you kind of need to know that all of your negatives are going to connect to your negative and all of your positives are going to connect to your positive. This is just a single light circuit, so it's not as finicky maybe. And so I'm just going up with the copper tape, folding, kind of doing a, I don't know if it's called a mitered corner, but you fold it back, fold it over again to get that corner, and then taking that bone folder and smoothing it out so it has a good solid connection on those corner points. And I don't know where I want that to end right now. So I'm just leaving myself a little bit of wiggle room tape there. And then I will start on the other one. So sorry, this one is way down at the bottom of the screen. I'm still not great at camera placement. And so you start on the back side of the switch and then you need to fold it over to the front side, making sure that piece is one connected piece. If your tape breaks, it's fine. Just go back over it again with making your copper tape overlap. It will fix, and you can, I think this card I ended up severing that copper tape in between the switch and the actual car panel. So I just went over it again with a piece of copper tape to connect it and it's actually probably a really good idea on that switch mechanism to do a double layer of copper tape. The tape is really cheap, it's fairly easy to apply and as long as you have a good connection there you won't have an issue with it not working. So the idea is that my battery will go top plus side up, negative side down, this was the idea, and you press it and then as long as your circuit or your LED light is in there properly, it will light up. So I decided on a blue one for this one. Kind of adjusted as I went here. And I'm just putting a, one side of copper tape on. And then I'm going to smooth that on top of the other piece of copper tape. The big thing is you don't want your negative and your positive wire, wiring or copper tape to touch. The only connection point should be what you want lit up. So you want that LED light to work, you need to have that LED light negative on the negative, the positive on the positive, and you don't want the positive or the negative to touch each other. So I'm just trying to wiggle my light here to where I want it so I can put that other piece of copper tape on top to connect it. And these ones fold up you can fold it down, fold it up. So you can kind of wiggle this one a little bit more than the button style LED. You have a little bit more wiggle room. And I will show you that when the end of this card, because I ended up moving that light like totally down, like I flipped. I moved, you know, because I didn't, the wires are movable. So I kind of bent it down a little bit. And so then the light's coming in from the bottom instead of the middle. So I just, Made sure that was sealed, and that's when I realized I switched my light around. So I ended up having the shorter side or the longer side on the opposite of what I thought. So no big deal. My battery's just going to be in backwards. Not that anybody will know but me. Well, okay, and all of you too, or whoever watches. It is. It's all good. So if it doesn't work the first time, switch your battery over. See if that's what your issue is. The other thing is to make sure that your connections are all good on your copper wiring. Sometimes it breaks and it doesn't work and you have to start, you know, just troubleshoot a little bit before you 
throw it in the trash and start over. And this is where I'm kind of bending it, turning it, trying to decide where I want it. This is straight up, so it's really bright when it is straight up. Not that it's not bright when it's on its side, but it's really bright straight up. So straight up, you could do like the light. You could do like the Christmas ornaments and have it poking through on the tree if you wanted. And that would be really bright. It would look really pretty too. But I will use the, I think that's Merry Mice, and I will use the Push Here stamp from that set for my cards. So just making sure that we're all good. Looking, looking good there. And I'm going to show you how to do the other one. But first, we're going to go, this is how it'll look through the light. And you can see that you can see that blue light all the way around there. So you're going to have to, to harness that light in the area that you want it. It will shine through in any open area on the card front if that's what you want it to do because it is a fairly bright light and you wouldn't even have to have a hole it would shine through the actual cardstock and I think my cardstock here is Nina Classic Crest 110 pound so it's some thick cardstock so here's the second one I am just gonna do this one I sped through this one for you I think I sped it up to two times or four times and yeah, I'm just going through doing my circuit again, doing your bottom, the bottom part, doing the switch, going through. And this one tends to be, so the button one, I like the button ones. They're bright, they're flat, they're, they're nice. But my issue with the button ones is, is my pieces don't always, like the little wire connections or the little metal connections on the buttons don't always connect great with the copper wire or the copper tape I should say and so in the future I think whenever I do these I am going to I just got some electric electric what is it called um it's called wire glue but it's like a connectivity so it's an electric conductor glue and so I think I will try that from here on out with the button ones. So I do put these on. I, you can try it before you even set it to make sure that your circuit is good. And this way. And the little button one has a little notch out of one side. And that notch is the negative side. So that kind of helps a lot on those. And that's why I like them, probably because they're easier to tell which side is negative and which side is positive. I usually put these on with the Distress Collage Medium or Glossy Accents. And I did end up, so this one worked great. Like, it was, it was doing really good. I had my card all the way put together. And I check it constantly to make sure that it's still working like my connection is good. Because I always fear that it's not going to be good. And I've tried to do like the wire on the little pieces to try to see if that would help make it work. And it hasn't. So I think the way to go is to either solder, which I ended up doing, pulling this card apart and just soldering on both sides a little bit. I have a soldering gun. And then, then they work fine. It's not my first time that I've had a solder on this style of light up card. But I'm guessing that electric connectivity glue is going to work really good. Just stirring it up good, taking a, a toothpick and then running it along both of the sides. So it just has that extra connectivity, which makes it work and not have to worry about it coming loose or losing connection there. So I put something heavy and flat on it to make sure that it stays down flat. And you can see that it's nice and bright there. And I will harness in that light as well because it will show through otherwise. 
a bigger portion or bigger area. I think Corinne, Corinne Wiskman did like a foiling on the back side if you want to just poke holes sort of thing. That was kind of a cool idea. I don't have a foil or so. So I'm just going to speed through the rest of the card making process with you because it wasn't my intent to show you the how I made the card, just how to do the circuits on this one. But this one I did prize ribbon and I think I decided on aged mahogany for the middle just for the background. Do some blending there. And my idea was, so I went with a Brutus Monroe glitter paste or glimmer paste because I was hoping that I could lift up the distress inks because it's not a distress medium thinking that it would turn them white or keep them white and it didn't work as well as I was hoping it did. I mean it's still lighter than maybe the distress one would have but it still turned out pretty cool. And now here's my special touch because I like to do extra and so I'm trying this one on both vellum and clear acetate and I ended up using the clear acetate in the first card that I'm showing you and the second card I tried to do the vellum thinking that it would be bright enough to shine through but it wasn't strong enough to shine through both of the vellums to give me the words that I wanted maybe if I had done the words on the second one and on the vellum in black it would have shown through a little bit better, but I didn't want you to be able to see the words until you pressed the button for the light. And so troubleshooting is like, you know, my middle name because I don't ever plan anything out and retry anything. I'm a fly by the seat in my pants kind of girl, so that's just kind of how it works. So here I'm just stamping and embossing the sentiment for my cards and I do everything in multiples a lot of times so you get to see this one and then part of the other card I don't even think I got a picture of the finished card on the other one I will try to put that on my Instagram so you can see the finished card because I ended up doing a border on it so this one we're just going around because so you have to harness the light plus you have to hide or accommodate the switch and so on this one I had doubled up my foam tape and I was trying to cheat it with just double foam tape but I needed three layers of foam tape I should have known I mean that's usually what I need but I was hoping I could get by with the two but the battery was still working without me pressing it so I had to go with the three layers on the bottom portion there. The other option is, and I did it with my second card, is where I took the base, so my my base piece is actually in two pieces. So I had the top part with the, the stars on it and then I cut where my battery pack was gonna be and my flooring is actually three layers of foam tape and the rest of the card is only two layers of foam tape cut back on some of the bulk of the whole card it still works um, most of the time if these are mailed I make sure that I put them in an envelope with either like bubble wrap or just a regular envelope and then I always weigh everything that's homemade card wise because I make heavy cards and so they usually do require a second stamp I've most of them have I haven't had any buddy say that there hasn't lit up once it's gotten there but yes so this one I keep checking it and keep checking it and keep checking it right and yeah it was just one of those when I was done with this one like all the way done that wire connection or the copper tape and that button had severed connection on one side or the other. It was still there but it was sketchy. So I ended up peeling this one apart and going in with a soldering gun and just or soldering iron I guess and then just soldering those points. So I don't have footage of that 
it took me entirely too long to ahem, tear it apart and solder it, but it is what it is. It works fine now. It looks it looks perfectly fine. So here I'm just going through, and if I could redo this, I would definitely put that piece below the red piece on my transparency sheet. And I'm just going through with some fussy cutting of to get that vellum on the back. And I'm using the pearlescent vellum from Lanthan for the little crystal ball. And so the idea behind this one was I didn't want you to be able to see the words really bright behind the ball until you press the light. And that's kind of what this one did. And I tried it with the other one and I will, I think that video footage is in here. And I should have put the piece of transparency behind this piece, not like behind the red piece. So it was a little bit further down and it would have actually like made the words bigger when it was brighter or when the light was lit. But this works. You can kind of see it, but you really see it once you press the button. So I'm just figuring out the layout on this one. And this will be it for this card. I'm just adding some cutout stars there. And then this is this one. So I tried to do the other piece and I just didn't, it wasn't bright enough. You couldn't see the words good enough. So I ended up just doing stays on on the transparency sheet and tucking that behind. There my cat's back back in place. A little bit of card surgery. No big deal. And this one's kind of cool because I have a little bit of area around there that isn't because because the base is set up and so my there's like a layer in between there and I didn't seal around that circle. So when that uh, that one lights up it kind of has a glow behind it which is kind of cool. But there is the finished card. Thanks for joining me today. Hopefully you understand circuits a little bit better. Um, questions, comments, please shoot me a message down below and I will try to get to them. Thanks for watching.